axis is symmetry. On the upper left of that graph paper I just passed out, Reyes and Medina, going to give me an, an x and y axis, 7 going all the way around, left, up, left, uh, right, and down, 7. On the upper left, please. An x and y axis. The title is axis of symmetry. the upper left, you have an x and y axis. Go ahead and write graph. Go ahead. Write graph x equals negative 3. Graph x equals negative 3. So that's the, that's the mission right now. You have an x and y axis on the upper left. Don't make it too big because I want you to fit multiple. Yeah, right. The words graph x equals negative 3. Now, x equals negative 3, we're going to take a trip down memory lane. Our math one days and before in junior high. Your teacher taught you how to graph simple lines like this with a table of values. So on the side, go to write an x and y chart, a table of values here. The reason why I'm going over this is because I have to pre. We, this is some prerequisite knowledge prior to me teaching what I got to teach you. Now, if I want to graph x equals negative three, that's a weird equation because it doesn't have any y value. There's no y variable, but I'm making a table of values with a y. That's kind of weird. There's no y, but I have a table of values with a y. Watch this. This is a very special kind of line. X equals negative three means this. Remember in week one, I said you can pick any value of x when you make your table of values? In this case, you can't pick any values of x because this equation is telling you what x always is. x is always negative 3. So when I make my table of values that you're going to copy me with, just put some negative threes here. Look at This is saying, this equation says, look, x is always negative 3. y can be whatever the heck you want it to be. Whatever floats your boat, you want your favorite numbers, knock yourself out. All that matters is x is always negative 3. Let's, let's see what kind of line or what kind of graph it creates. Watch. Uh, Garcia, what's your favorite number? Give me something smaller. I'll go, how about 4? And I'll go 7. Valdez, what's your favorite number? 4. Miss <laughs> <laughs> what's your favorite number? Miss Dottis. Four. It really is. It is fine. That's fine. Yeah. Miss Padilla, give me your favorite number. Um, four. Six. Seven. How about this? <laughs> five. 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 Nine. Nine. Seven. Five. He told us to make the graph of seven. <laughs> okay. Go ahead and put these three ordered pairs on your X and Y chart on your graph paper. Notice what just took place. We didn't pick values for x because the equation is telling us what x is always going to be, negative 3. Well, we just picked any numbers for y. Let's plot these puppies, plot them with me. Look at what, what kind of line it creates. Negative 3, 4, plot it with me. Negative 3, 7, plot it with me. Negative 3, 6, plot it with me. What kind of line is this? The line. Good job, Valdez. What kind of? <laughs> what kind of? Nice. So the moral of the story in this little memory lane trip that we took back in the, we went back to the future, so to speak, is that if you have an equation with just x equals a number, it's going to result in a vertical line straight up and down, no, no slantedness, just straight vertical, and it's going to be at that number, negative 3 on the x axis. 
For instance, uh, if I said graph x equals 4, it would be a vertical line. Look at at 4. As simple as that. Now, that's easy. So the reason why I have to cover this is because when we deal with axis of symmetry, you've got to know that a vertical line's equation is just x equals that, whatever number it crosses the x-axis at. Now, you guys are doing perfect. Go ahead and give me another x and y axis to the right of the one you just drew. Give me another one to the right of it on the upper right. Give me another x and y axis. It gets kind of messy. Just so, so for, just for clarity's sake. You don't have to put the numbers, by the way. The numbers, I know that where the numbers are at. You know where the numbers are at. Don't worry about putting the numbers, right, Mr. Thotis? <laughs> so on the second graph, go ahead and plot these points. Ready? Ray, stay with me. I'm obviously red. Negative 3, 2. Plot a point at negative 3, 2. Plot a point at negative 4, 3. And negative 2, 3. And then plot a point at negative 5, 6. And negative 1, 6. Go ahead and plot those points exactly the way you see those. Plot them on your graph, please. Is this supposed to be 0, 6? What's the language over there? Someone question? I think so. Just erase erase your dots and just follow my dots. Okay. I'll go check it out in the well. In the meantime, draw a parabola with me. Wanna draw a parabola with me? Uh oh. All right. So. All right. So two days ago, help me out, please. Two days ago, we defined our first word on our notes. It said. The definition was axis symmetry. This was two days ago. If you're absent, you can copy those notes down later on the video. But the axis symmetry said this. It's on your notes. The vertical line that cuts to the middle of a parabola, and we drew two little pictures. It's a vertical line that slices and dices a parabola right in half, whether it's open up or down. Watch this now. Look at the one we just drew. What would be the equation of the line that slices this puppy right in half? Can someone give me the equation? Awesome. Going to draw a vertical line, slicing this puppy right in half. I just taught you when we went down memory lane that the equation of any vertical line is x equals whatever that number is. In this case, going to write x equals negative 3 and going to put AOS. That means axis of symmetry. Instead of writing axis of symmetry out and getting a hand cramp because you keep writing it over and over, just write AOS. So we all know that what we mean is axis of symmetry. Here's the equation of the axis of symmetry, x equals negative 3. It chops that puppy right in half. This may be the easiest lesson the whole year. No. <laughs> Watch this. Let's go ahead and make another parabola on the other side, opening down. Draw it with me. Here we go. 4, negative 2. On the same coordinate plane, on the same x and y axis. Do it right over here now. So go to write 4, negative 2, plot it. 3, negative 3. 5, negative 3. 2, negative 6. And 6, negative 6.
So this parabola is opening down. If some of you, if some of you would like an extra stamp right now, can someone tell me what the y value is called at that topmost point? Got it. But they got extra stamp. One more time. The maximum. So the maximum here would be negative two. It's the y coordinate. The minimum over here. This would be the minimum. The y coordinate of that bottommost point would be the minimum. Good. Um, someone besides Badia, give me the, the axis of symmetry equation for this puppy. Awesome. There's four right there. Who said that? Yes, you do. So go ahead and put an arrow. Put an arrow on that vertical line and go and write AOS. Axis symmetry, x equals 4. I should be ashamed of myself for giving you a lesson so easy. Nah, cool. I feel like guilty. 